Or do we want to talk about Quiet on Set? It's Ooh. on Max. That's the uh, it's the a Nickelodeon four one. part yeah special about if you watch Nickelodeon mm-hmm. in the late nineties, early two thousands, mm-hmm. you know these shows. All that. Right. Um, geez, Zoe 101, The Amanda Show. Drake and Josh, Drake and I Josh. Carly. Yeah. And a pretty big bomb. Mm-hmm. Drake Bell mentioned that he was. So, okay, the, the main takeaway is Dan Schneider. Now, look, I know Dan Schneider from, did you ever see Better Off Dead? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The most underrated 80s movie of all time. Okay, wait, I need to clarify. No, I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. But you've about. heard of it. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's got uh, John Cusack in Mm -hmm. it, and Dan Schneider played the annoying neighbor guy, I mean, really disgusting neighbor guy, Mm -hmm. who hosted a French foreign exchange student that John Cusack sort of fell in love with and wanted to impress, and Dan Schneider's character tried to prevent him from getting anywhere near right. his girlfriend that was staying in his house. That's all I knew Yikes. Dan Schneider from. Yeah. Apparently had a heck of a career after that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And started producing shows and stuff. Come to find out, kind of an asshole. Yeah. To work yeah, for. there were lots of there were lots of allegations for a long time and it won't surprise me when some of those are proven to be true. Okay, and to make matters worse, they hired a couple of pedos, right. one of whom molested Drake Bell. Yeah. And boy, that explains a lot, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't excuse anything, no. but it does explain a lot. I want to know where were the parents? Apparently, they were on set. Well, that's the thing, though. Where you were don't all like... the other cast members, all the other crew members? Yeah. All the other producers. Yeah. That's the thing. It's really hard to be a caring Hollywood parent because realistically, like, even just setting your kid up to do one of those shows has certain requirements of them that no kid should really have to have on their shoulders. And so it's sort of inherently not a great thing. And I guess I would have loved to hear from Amanda Bynes on this whole thing, Mm -hmm. but she, I don't know if she's under a conservative ship, a conservatorship like Britney Spears, but, and I think she was, I don't know, arrested last spring for Mm -hmm. something or other. And you remember her Twitter meltdown where she was kind of posting mostly nude photos of herself. Right, right. Um, I remember talking about that when that happened Mm -hmm. and just going, because it's so sad when you see a child star implode. It's so sad Mm -hmm. when you, you know, I was shocked when Behind the Music first started airing. Remember that show? Because oh, it's it's the typical every episode was the typical tale memorably the TLC episode but mm-hmm. the typical tale of you know artists music artists or um, actors mm-hmm. just getting wrecked by the industry right right but the other the other half of the show was like oh that's terrible my well, takeaways biggest- were don't ever let your kid go into show business and they need to start having you know child advocates. Mm-hmm. As part of the crew. Yeah. Like Nick was trying to save money. And so like like Dan Schneider screwed over a couple of writers in the process. Ah, oh, just heartbreaking yeah. to hear and realize. Yeah. Well, and the biggest thing too is like all of these people, all of the child actors were under 18, obviously, because they're child actors. So there's no way that they could really give true informed consent. <laughs> you know, they could give some, sure. But realistically, like... As a kid, you don't understand the repercussions of taking on a task like this. You really don't. You know? And like And, and you'll you'll cave yeah. to pressure easily, I think. Yeah. And I okay, and I think ooh, I I'm gonna feel really dumb if I get this wrong. I think her name is Jenna McCurdy. Yes, the yes. the gal who wrote the book. Yeah, I'm glad my mom died. She played Sam in iCarly. Mm-hmm. They um, t- they did touch on iCarly a little bit too. Yeah. And I think that the way that she sort of talked about it was very thoughtful and and thought provoking you know and she talked about things like how um i carly stole her first kiss because she for one of her scenes had to kiss her co-worker um the boy who played don't remember his name now mm. the boy character on i carly yeah not <laughs> yeah the, the one that no one cared about <laughs> <Sorry>. that, yeah. <laughs> well and that's the thing kidding, you know I mean, it was a little past my time i was right, kind of right it was a little past my time too yeah, yeah. like i was already over Nickelodeon when that came out. Mm. But but anyway, um, but yeah, I just remember like, you know, 
uh, she was kind of talking about it in an interview and she was saying how like she'd never kissed anyone before. That was her first kiss. And she had basically asked if there was any way that she could do a stage kiss or something like that. And they were like, nope, sorry. And it, it just, yeah. it sucks how much autonomy was stolen from her as a child. It's horrible what happened. It's heartbreaking. I even cried a couple of times just going, oh, man. like I had to, I had to stop after episode two mm-hmm. and I waited a couple of hours between uh, that and three and four uh, because it was just a lot to take emotionally. Right. You know, that's hard for me to see somebody else going through a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a sweet, sensitive boy. Well, I, uh, I, know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think we've said before, I think I'm so empathic that I shut that part of my brain off. Right. I get and just that. go, nope, can't feel those feelings. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't been to therapy much lately. So uh, <laughs> maybe I'll dive into that when I'm like, maybe like 70. <laughs> Not about me. Anyway, mm-hmm. certainly worth the watch, especially mm-hmm. if you were a fan of those shows, but it might take away some of the good feelings you have about those shows. Right. I really do want to watch it, actually. I've been meaning to for a while. We'd love to hear mm-hmm. what you have to say. Tell us your thoughts and feelings and opinions. But, you know, I think the biggest part is we need, like you were saying, we need advocates on set. We need stricter labor laws, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, you remember the, the uh, Upton Sinclair muck, <clears throat> muckraking thing, mm-hmm. you know, over a century ago. Let's do that again. Right. With Hollywood, especially child actors. Yeah. They can't always speak for themselves. They need somebody to speak for them. Well, and the worst part, too, is a lot of the time the parents don't have incentives to speak for their kids. You know, I know that there are lots of child actors who were the ones who were the main breadwinner in the house. Right. You know, and so when you're a person who is under an authority, who's forcing you to do this labor, and you don't have the choice to opt out of it like an an adult would... Thank goodness Taylor Swift turned out okay. Okay, don't jinx her with that. 